Hello and welcome to my spaceship. It's, it's not a PNG. Here, come take a look. Look, we can, uh, can see what's that way. We can take a look at that, that wall on the left there. There's a ceiling. There's, there's floors. It's, it's totally, it's totally legit. It's so legit, it even has zero G. Now, I know what you're thinking. Max, you really fucking need a haircut. And yes, you have a point, but hear me out. Unreal virtual production, right? It's the holy grail of modern filmmaking. It's like the hottest thing right now. We've all seen The Mandalorian and we were all willing to overlook how bad it was because of how good it looked. And the cool thing is, if you have a projector or a big enough TV, you can do it. And I'm gonna tell you how. Now this is not a proper tutorial and it's not a complete setup. I haven't gotten to all of the display outputs, all that stuff, but this is like how to get as far as I got so far. Let's do this. Now first things first, you wanna go to unrealengine.com, click the blue download button, scroll down, click a bigger download button. And once it's done, it's gonna open up the Epic Games installer. You wanna click on this Unreal Engine item in the sidebar and click the big yellow button in the top right. It's gonna say install. And once it installs, it's gonna turn into the launch button. It's gonna want a lot of gigabytes, so make sure you have the gigabytes. Now, first time you launch Unreal, you're gonna see a list of projects. You see I have a bunch here already. You wanna click on the film video and live events and then blank. Name your project something cool, like super awesome YouTube, just not too long. And then hit create. Your Unreal window might look a little different, so make sure you have your outliner and your details view enabled. We're gonna need those. All right, it's time to enable some shit. So let's go to settings, plugins, and you wanna make sure these plugins are enabled. You wanna go and enable a live link. You wanna enable virtual camera. And you wanna enable Apple AR kit. You also wanna enable pixel streaming. I forgot it in this recording because I already have it enabled, but pixel streaming is another one you need. Once you've added those, it's gonna ask you to restart. Don't do it yet, we'll do it later. Go to window, virtual production, and turn on live link. It's gonna give you this live link panel. We're gonna use this later. Now, before we continue, we need an environment. I'm going to use some assets I got off of Unreal Store. I have this spaceship thing that's like 20 bucks, so I'm going to add that. Uh, you can use any marketplace package you like. Just when you have it, click this Add to Project button and then select the project that we just created. All right, once that's done, we're gonna wanna go to content drawer, select our spaceship, and in this package, there is a overview map that has all of the assets neatly arranged for us to use. It's gonna take a moment to load, and once it's done, we can move around the scene and explore the assets. We're gonna go into one of these cabins in the front. Let's, uh, let's get rid of Mars. Fire. let's get into this cockpit and sort of look at what we're gonna be filming. I'm thinking this triangle window looks kind of neat. Let's get rid of that other planet back there. And now what we need to do is kind of line the earth up in a way that we like. Let's change the scale a little bit, move it around. Just play with it until it looks kind of like what you want. Okay, now we wanna to go to the plus cube and select a virtual production VCAM actor. This is the magic component. You'll see the camera is gonna change and we get some weird new UI, but you wanna take note of this VCAM actor thing in your outliner, we're gonna need that later. Specifically, these camera component and VCAM component, these two are the important ones. All right, now let's move this new camera back to our original spot and set up the angles. So it's gonna be roughly here. Now let's go to camera component and change some things. We wanna to go to the lens settings menu here and match the lens with whatever lens you're shooting with. In my case, I have a 24 to 70 2.8, which is perfect. And I have it set to 35. So I'm just gonna set the minimum focal length to 35. 
and maximum for that matter. Just, just fix it to 35, we're not gonna be zooming it. So now it gets a little tighter, so take a couple of steps back and we more or less have our shot. Now let's set up the iPhone motion control. We wanna go option click your Wi-Fi icon and note your local IP address, right? Right, now we go into edit project settings and we wanna change two things here. First, you wanna scroll down to rendering and then in the search field, you wanna type in pixel buffer or frame buffer and you change your frame buffer pixel format to 8-bit RGBA. Once that's done, is gonna ask you to restart. Let's not do that just yet. Instead, we wanna scroll down to UDP messaging and in your unicast endpoint, you wanna select the IP that you just saw or just type it in. Remember the colon zero at the end. Now you can restart your engine and you should be good to go. Now let's jump over to the iPhone and set everything up on the phone. So first you wanna download this LiveLink vCam app. It's free, just look it up. Once you have it, click open, and it's gonna give you the single input field. In this field, you wanna put in the IP address that you just put in your unicast endpoint, but without the colon zero. Now at this point, if you're me, you will have an error saying it could not connect to the server. A couple of people had similar issues, a couple of people had this exact one, they weren't able to solve it, here's how to solve it. You wanna go into settings, and in the connection type, you wanna change it from pixel streaming to remote session. This is a legacy protocol that seems to be more reliable, uh, even though pixel streaming is the new fancy one. If that one works, just use that. If it doesn't, switch to remote session. All right, now let's go back to the main screen, hit connect, and at this point you should be seeing your Unreal viewport on your phone. And there's one last thing we need to do in the engine, which is to go down to this live link panel we've opened up earlier, click source, message bus source, and select our live link vCam. It's gonna pop in the iPhone live link subject. We wanna go to the vCam actor, vCam component, so it's the innermost one. Scroll down to live link subject and select iPhone. And holy moly, guys, we are controlling the camera with our phone. Holy crap, would you look at that? This is honestly just super awesome on its own, but once we put it on top of a camera, it's gonna be really sick. All right, one last thing we need to do is turn off the UI. So we wanna go down to Output Providers, select whichever one you're using, so Pixel or Unreal Remote, which is the remote session one. Make sure it's active, but then go down to UMG Overlay and just turn it off. Now with the UI gone, we can just plug into our TV and film stuff. Now the lighting setup is pretty simple, it's just one key light and the lightsaber. This one is just there to accentuate the blue light that wraps around me in this shot, so it just goes on top of the TV. Now I'm using DJI RS2 with the motion control feature because I have no friends and I have to do it by myself. So at this point I just need to program the motion track, hit record, and now it's time for some zero G acting. Oh boy, look at him go. Look at me being all floaty. Believe it or not, the thing that actually sells your virtual production is not your background, it's your foreground. It's stuff that belongs in that world that exists in this world. In case of The Mandalorian, it's stuff like the rock props. So I needed to come up with something that belongs over there that I could put over here, which is how the cup came to be. I took a Vector MCRN logo I found on Reddit. I put it in this Cricut machine I have for another project. And then after some brief arts and crafts class, I got myself a Martian Navy cup that I can suspend from a string from a sewing kit that I stole from my hotel once. High-end visual effects over here. Unfortunately, I couldn't film the camera with the action because I don't have anyone to move it to match the movements of the world like what I'm doing. See here, when I filmed it with myself in the shot, I can move to match the movement of the world as the camera moves, but the cup remains stationary, which kind of looks out of place. Also, this wasn't a particularly easy setup because I don't have C-stands. I would like to state for the record that this is fucking stupid. If you're going to try something like this, please, for the love of God, buy a C-stand.
So I green screened it, three tracked the scene and put it there with some light lens blur. Now obviously this setup has plenty of limitations and not all of us unfortunately have ILM budgets, but for what I'm trying to do with this, this is honestly pretty good. It about doubles my range of motion from TV's edges at about a meter and a half away. And if you're using it for something like product shots, this honestly works really well. If you want to do more character stuff where you need more headroom, that sort of thing, you might want to invest in one of these short throw projectors. They can go up to about 150 inches and that should get you covered. All right, that's it for now. If you found this video useful, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Make sure to like that hit button. Stay tuned. There's a lot more cool stuff coming to this channel. So you know, subscribe or I will be forced to intervene.